In today's video, we're going to look at 10 little known features on the Mac. This includes searching the menu bar, opening recent documents from the dock, something that I do on a daily basis, as well as using a scroll gesture to zoom into your Mac's display. We're going to be unlocking secrets that even seasoned Mac users might not know. Let's take a look at these 10 little known tips for the Mac. The first feature we're going to look at is how we can search our menu bar. What we're able to do is search for any of these items underneath our menu bar. So as an example, let's say I wanted to find Get Info. I'm not sure where it is under these menus here. I know it's there somewhere. Well, all I need to do is just go under Help here. And when I click on it, you're going to see that I have a search field here. And all I have to do is just type in what I'm searching for. So let's go with Info. And you're going to see that I have menu items here. And when I move my cursor over top of it, what it'll do is it'll actually open up that menu and show me where that is with a blue arrow. So I'm going to go move my cursor over top of it. And we can see it opened up the file menu and we have a blue arrow there pointing to Get Info. So it's showing me where that is. And this works across different apps. If I'm in Mail, what I would like to do is forward this. I'm not sure where it is. I have a lot of menus here and they have a lot of different items in here. All you need to do is just go over to Help here, and we just type in Forward. And when we do, you're going to see we have Menu Items. And when I move my cursor over top of the menu item I'm looking for, it'll open up that menu, and it puts that blue arrow there showing you where it is. So that's how we can search our menu bars. Let's stick with the menu. Did you know that we could also rearrange our menu extras directly from the menu bar? Let's go back over to my Mac. Now, if you're not familiar with menu extras, these are these little menu extras that are located on the right side of the menu bar. These can extend in an application. They are installed by both Mac OS as well as apps, including third-party apps. So we have my control center. This is accessible from a menu extra. We have my date and time. I also have my Wi-Fi, all installed by Mac OS. But I also have Paste, which is my clipboard history manager, third-party app. I click on this and I can see my history. And then I also have Shortcuts, installed by the Shortcuts app. I click on this and I can see my different shortcuts that I've installed. Well, what we're able to do is rearrange these. To do that, all we have to do is just hold down the command key while we click on it. So let's go with the shortcuts app here. What I'd like to do is move this over to the right. So I hold down the command key and I click on it. You're going to see that it turns gray. And then all I have to do is just drag it and place it where I want. Maybe I access my paste quite a bit and I want to have this on the right. So I go over here, I click the command key and then I drag it and I place it where I want. So that's how we can rearrange our menu extras. Now let's take a look at our third tip. We can set what a new finder window opens to. When we open up a new finder window, I'm going to go to command in, opens up a new finder window. By default, this opens to recents. Well, I'm not a huge fan of recents. I actually use the dock for this. I'll show you that later on. So what I would like to do is set this to open up to my home folder. That's what I like to do. Or maybe I want to open it to iCloud. Well, in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to go to our Finder Settings. So I go up under Finder here, and then we go over to Settings. A new window will open up, and then from here, when we're looking at General, what we're able to do is set what new Finder windows open to. And we can see it is set to Recents by default. So now I just select this, and I'm going to go with my Home folder. That's my favorite place to open them. So I just select that. And now when I close this, let's go ahead and close this. When I open up a new Finder window, instead of going to Recents, what it's going to do is go over to my Home folder. So then from here, what I'm able to do is select any one of these folders to open it up. So that's how we can set what a new Finder window opens to by default. Now let's take a look at one of my most popular tips on my YouTube channel. That is how we can always show the scroll bar. Let's go and take a look at my Applications folder because I have a lot of files in here. So we're just going to go to my Applications folder. Now by default, 
you're going to see that we do not have a scroll bar here. The only time that the scroll bar shows is when I scroll up and down. We can see that we have my scroll bar there. But if I don't do anything, it'll disappear. So the only time that it shows is when I actually scroll up and down. Well, what we're able to do is have that always show. And this is going to show on all of the apps as well. When I go and open up my system settings, we have a lot of settings in here. You're going to see that I do not have a scroll bar. But when I swipe up and down, we have my scroll bar. And again, what it'll do is it'll disappear when I am not scrolling. Well, in order to always show that, what we need to do is we need, actually need to go to our system settings. And then we go under Appearance. Under Appearance, you're going to see an option for Show Scroll Bars. And by default, it's set to Automatically. Well, we don't want it to be automatically. We always want to show that scroll bar. And when we do, let's go ahead and click this. You're going to see that my scroll bar here is always showing. And when we go to the Finder window, remember how we couldn't see it unless we were scrolling? There's my scroll bar. I move my cursor away. You're going to see that it doesn't disappear. It is always showing. So now what I'm able to do is just take a look at this window and I can see where I am at just by looking at the scroll bar. I no longer have to scroll to show it. So that's how we can always show our scroll bar. Now let's take a look at another tip with the system settings. What we're able to do is show all of our settings directly from the dock. And not only can we show all of our settings, we can actually see more settings such as Time Machine and they're in alphabetical order. Let's see what I mean. Let's first open up our settings app. So I go down to my Settings app, and when I click on it, you're going to see that I have all of these different settings here. But what Apple did is they first hit a lot of the settings. Time Machine isn't in here, so where do we find our Time Machine? Well, what I need to do is I need to go to General, and then I have to go over to Time Machine. Same thing with Storage. Storage isn't in here. Where do I find it? Well, again, I need to go to General, and then I have Storage. So they kind of buried some of the settings. In addition to that, they are grouped together by what type of setting they are. And they're not in alphabetical order. Well, what I like to do is I like to see them all in alphabetical order. So I would like to see Time Machine and Storage, as well as all these other settings, and I want to see them in alphabetical order. Now, one way you can do that is by just going up to View in the menu bar when you are looking at your system settings. When you're looking at your system settings, you can go to View, and then you can see all of these different settings here, including Storage, as well as Time Machine. But let's say you have system settings closed. You usually don't keep your system settings open, at least I don't. So let's go ahead and close this. I'm just going to quit out of it. I would still like to access my Time Machine settings. Make sure that my Time Machine is working. See when the last time it backed up. Well, all you need to do is go over to your system settings in the dock. It does need to be in the dock. And then if you click and hold, you're going to see all these different settings here. And then from here, what you're able to do is select them. So let's go ahead and select Time Machine. What it's going to do is open this up to my Time Machine. So I don't have to keep system settings open, but all I have to do is just long press on system settings and then I can see all those. So that's how you can easily access all your settings within the dock. Let's stick with the dock here. Now let's take a look at how we can open up recent documents from the dock. Now this only works with apps that work with documents. As an example, this works great with pages and numbers. So I have a number of documents that I work with on a regular basis. So they're in my recents. Well, when we go and Click and hold or long press on the application. Let's go with numbers here. You're going to see that I can see all of my recent documents for numbers. All I have to do is just select it. Let's go ahead and open up Complex Budget here. What it does is it opens up numbers and it opens up that document. Now I'm done with that. I just quit out of it. I'm working on something else. But now what I'd like to do is open up a different numbers document, one that I opened up recently. So all I have to do is just go back over to Numbers here. I long press on it, and let's go with Set App Pricing. Select it, and now it's going to open up that document. 
And again, we can do the same thing with pages. So I just go over to pages here, long press, and I can see all of my documents that I've recently opened. So that's how you can open up your recent documents from the doc. Now the next tip we're going to look at is how we can group all our different file types together. What we're able to do when we're looking at our different documents within a folder, we can group all of the PDFs together as an example, all of the JPEGs together. This comes in particularly handy if you have a lot of items in a folder. Let's go back over to my Mac. So I'm looking at my downloads folder. I have a number of different files in here and there are all kinds of files, PDFs, movies, images, CSV files. What I would like to do is group them together by kind or by file type. Well, all we have to do is just go over to our toolbar within the finder window and you're gonna see group. And what we're able to do is group our different items together, our different documents together by kind. This is typically how I will use it, although you can use other options as well, by date or anything like that. But we're gonna look at kind. This is typically how I will do it. So all I have to do is just select kind here. And when I do, we can see that it grouped all my movies together. It grouped all of my spreadsheets together. I scroll up. I can see all of my images. Here are all of my documents. Here are all of my applications. And of course, I have all of my folders. So it's just grouping them all together. Again, this comes in particularly handy when you have a lot of items in a folder. Now, not only can you view this in the list, but if I go and change my view here to a different view, it will still work. Let's go with icons. When I select this, we can still see that it is grouping them together. And it even works with columns. We can see that it's grouping them together. So this is a nice way to view your files within a folder if you have a lot of items in it. This could come in handy for maybe your documents folder or even the downloads folder. So that's how you can group your different items together, your different documents together. Now let's take a look at a feature that I used at the Apple Store on a regular basis. How we can use gesture control to zoom into our display on the Mac. When we're looking at our Mac, if you wanted to zoom in, there's really no way of doing that. Now I do have a third party app, Cursor Pro, that allows me to zoom into a specific area when I'm highlighting it here, but that's not what I'm talking about. Also, this is a third party app, you have to pay for this. What we're able to do is also zoom into the Mac's display just by scrolling. This is an accessibility option. So what I'm going to do is just go over to my settings app here. Let's just go ahead and turn it on so you can see what I mean. So I'm going to go to system settings. It is an accessibility option. So I go to accessibility and then we go over to zoom. When I click on zoom, you're going to see that there's an option here for use scroll gesture with modifier keys to zoom. So what does all that mean? Well, basically I'm going to use a modifier key, which is going to be the control key. That's what I like to use. When I hold down the control key and I scroll up or down on my trackpad, it also works if you scroll up or down on a mouse, but I have a MacBook Air here, so I can just use the trackpad. But if I hold down the control key and scroll up and down, it's gonna zoom in. Now, the first thing I need to do is I need to turn this on. So let's go ahead and turn this on. Now, let's see how this works. All I have to do to zoom in, let's say I wanted to zoom into this area here. I don't have Cursor Pro. In fact, let's go ahead and turn that off. I'm just gonna go over here to Cursor Pro and we're gonna disable it. So I'm not using Cursor Pro. This is the typical setup for a Mac user. So now I wanna zoom into this area here. Well, all I have to do is just hold down the control key and then I take two fingers and I scroll up and down. Watch what happens. So I'm scrolling and you can see that I'm zooming in. I scroll out, it zooms out. Now, the way that this works is it scrolls into where your cursor is. So if I move down here, when I hold down the control key and I zoom in with gestures, it's going to zoom into where my cursor is. So if I want to go up here, I zoom in and it zooms into that area where the cursor is. I use this at the Apple Store quite a bit when we had to read something or I had to show something. So all I had to do when the customer was in front of me was just go and zoom in like this and they could easily read it.
So it makes it really easy to zoom in on the screen. Just hold down the control key and click. And again, this is in accessibility. Let's go ahead and turn my Cursor Pro back on here. If you wanna learn more about Cursor Pro, I do have a tutorial on that as well. So that's how we can use gesture control to zoom into our Mac. Now the next two features we're going to look at are Mac OS and Noma features. All of the other features have been around for a while, but the next two are exclusive to Mac OS Sonoma and later. The first one we're going to look at is how we can hide desktop items. So you're gonna see, let's go ahead and close this window here, and this one here. You're gonna see that I have some desktop items here. Well, what we're able to do is actually hide these. If you have a lot of desktop items, what you may want to do is hide them. And then if you do hide them, what you'll do is you'll go over to your desktop folder here to access them. So then it's just another folder. You're not actually using your desktop. How can we hide these different items? Well, all we need to do is just go over to our system settings again. And then what we do is we go over to desktop and dock. Under desktop and dock, introduced in macOS Sonoma, you're gonna see that we have show items. And by default, we can show our items on the desktop. This is gonna be checked. But watch what happens to these two items when I uncheck it. So I'm going to uncheck this, and you're gonna see that they disappear. So they are no longer on my desktop. Now, you probably know that your desktop is just another folder. So you can always find those in your desktop folder. You just have to go over to your desktop folder there. So if you have a lot of items on your desktop and you want to try to use the folder instead of using your desktop, all you have to do is just go over to your desktop and stage manager under desktop here and make sure that this is unchecked. And then it's gonna hide all of your desktop items. I'm going to leave this on. I typically will leave this on because I don't have a lot of items on my desktop, but it is a good tip for people that have a lot of items on their desktop. The last one here, Apple introduced with Mac OS Sonoma as well. And that is when you click on the desktop, all of your windows will disappear. So when we're looking at my Mac here, when I click on this area here, watch what happens. All my windows disappear. I click on it again to show it. Now I get what Apple's intent was here is if you wanna see your desktop, all you have to do is just click anywhere where there isn't a window and everything disappears. It's kinda of nice. But in actual use, it turns out to be a little annoying. Every time you click on the desktop, it doesn't matter where, these windows disappear. So here's what I recommend people do. I recommend they turn this off. And the way you do that is, you again, you go over to your desktop and dock in the system settings. And then you're gonna see click wallpaper to reveal desktop. All we have to do is just say only in stage manager. So when we select this, when you're using Stage Manager, it will still move everything when you click the desktop. But if you're not using Stage Manager, now when I click here, it is not going to show the desktop. So what can you do to show that desktop? Now this is an old trick. What you can do is you can use hot corners. So if we go down to the bottom here, you're gonna see we have hot corners. And what I'm able to do is set what my Mac does when I move my cursor into a corner could be any one of the corners. So what I typically will do is I will set a corner here to show the desktop. All I have to do is just click on hot corners here, opens up a new window, and I usually use the lower left hand corner, you can see I already have it set, but just go and select desktop. When you select desktop and you wanna show your desktop, hide all the windows, all you have to do is just move your cursor down to the corner here. Watch what happens when I move it in the lower corner, all the way in that corner. My windows disappear. I move it again, they come back. But this time I'm in control. It's not like I have to click anywhere or I accidentally click somewhere. This is more intentional, which is what I like. I go down to the corner, shows my desktop, go back into the corner, it shows all the windows again. A very easy way to show the desktop and you're not gonna have those accidental clicks that you do with Mac OS Sonoma by default. So, so those are 10 relatively unknown features or tips for the Mac. Some of them have been around for a long time such as searching the menu bar, or always showing the scroll bar, or even grouping files by kind, but a couple of them are also brand new. 
We can hide our desktop items, and then we can also turn off click to show your desktop, which can get a little annoying after a while. So those are 10 little known tips for the Mac. I'm sure I didn't catch them all. I'm sure there are a lot more. And if you know of any that I missed, I'd love to hear them. Leave them below in the comments. So those are 10 little known tips for the Mac.